So hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of AMC's Corner. How are you all doing out there? So it's early November up here in New England, and that is the beginning of the rust season. Uh, as anybody that has a vehicle or has tried to maintain a vehicle up here knows that uh, up here in northern Massachusetts, in the northeastern part of the, of the United States, cars don't really break down and wear out off the road. They rot off the road. So with all the salt that gets added to the highways, the municipalities dump on all the, the brines and salts they put down. And then being up here, we got the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, we have stuff called nor'easters where we have a lot of salt spray coming off the ocean uh, into different areas up here on the coast. So we have a big problem with vehicles rotting out. Uh, it seems more often than not cars rot off the road instead of wearing off the road. So we have a couple of different things we do up here to try to maintain our vehicles. Um, one thing that I recently had dropped off, uh, someone wants me to try out their New Hampshire oil undercoating. Now this is going to be, uh, if you guys want to take a look, and pause it and read all the details and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, one thing we do is uh, we undercoat vehicles. Um, one type of undercoating we use is kind of like the spray-on factory black undercoating. Uh, I've actually got a, a little can of it here we'll show you in a minute. But uh, another thing that we use up here, which seems to work better than a lot of these, these hard undercoats, is an oil-based undercoating. Uh, back in the day, people used to use boiled linseed oil to kind of protect the, the metal portions, the untreated metal portions, frames on a pickup truck or cross members and whatnot. Um, the trouble is, is once something starts to rust, you really don't want to use like a hard undercoating. That's the best time to use the oil undercoating. So we're going to, on the sonnet here, because I drive this car four seasons, um, we're going to put this car up. We're going to see just how well it's fared since the three years ago I restored it. I know there's some rust starting to happen under here. But uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to clean some of that rust up and then we're going to put a rust converter on it which uh, I use rust mort basically this is uh, phosphoric acid and what it does is you spray it on and it converts the phosphoric the phosphoric acid converts the iron oxide into ferric phosphate which is a a coating that isn't water soluble so it won't get broken down by moisture that you're going to drive through um, it's also uh, airtight, so any oxygen can't get to the metal to, to allow it to rust, which really is, is what rust is. It's oxygen breaking down the, the bonds in the metal that create the rust. Uh, water and salt just kind of add to the ability of that, the ions to break down and, and convert it to rust or iron oxide and to ferrous phosphate, blah, blah, blah. So we're going we're gonna to clean up a little bit of rust. We're going to get the sonnet here up in the air. We're going to clean some stuff up. And uh, we'll see this stuff right here, take rusty metal and change surface rust, get rid of it just right in front of your eyes. Well, all right, guys, I got, uh, I got the sonnet up here on the lift, and we can see all the, uh, the metal I added when I raised the trunk up and, and replaced all that rusty metal. You can see it starting to surface rust and all that. Um, when I put this car together, I didn't expect it to last more than a summer or two, and here it is three years later going strong, so... Got to uh, nip this in the bud, so we'll get a little bit of that phosphoric acid on this, on the trunk here. Um, you can see some of these original areas with the original undercoating. You want to get as much of this off as you can before we add any of the, uh, the rust treatment and preventative measures. But I'm not going to go too crazy on the old sheet metal. For this case, I'm more interested in all of this fresh metal that I, I added to it. As you can see, we got a little bit of surface rust. The, uh, the black spray bomb I put on it starting to... Uh, to come off but you know for how long I've been running this car um, it's 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 not bad not bad at all so uh, yeah let's uh, let's get a little acid sprayed around here let me yeah. and we'll just spray it on a few areas here this is one of those cases where less is definitely more and down here on Trying not to get the spray on my face or my camera or anything, that would be bad. Alright, now we're going to watch this in a few spots. Should have uh, some shiny metal starting to show through. Alright 
guys, I got the sawn it all sprayed up and treated with the phosphoric acid. Um, it didn't really show up as well on camera looking from the bottom of the car up uh, as how this converts. But you can see I got this piece of rusty metal here which uh, is left over from the sheet of steel that I bought to redo this car with all the floors in the trunk. And it's been kicking around the shop for, you know, three or so years now and uh, it's looking pretty rusty. You can see this side here is pretty much how it looks. And now on this side over here is all uh, the rags. It's kind of acidy, but it's just look look at this. I can just wipe it, and it just comes right almost to bare metal with no rust at all. Now that was all I did was just some some rust mort. You can really see this is this is just untreated, just how we picked it up, and and this side here how this just. It just it just dissolves all the loose rust and any rust that's that's into the metal it converts it to ferric phosphate and that's what be all this black you see all the the blackness in it but uh, you can see the clean metal almost like a brand new sheet you know, just nothing but a little wipe after spraying this on this rusty sheet and and it went from from that to that I think it's actually even still working as I'm sitting here talking about it so. Uh, yeah, if you've got to save some rusty metal, rust mort is a good second step. Now, uh, I say second step because you want to try to get all the scaly rust off with a wire brush, a wire wheel, some sandpaper, what have you, whatever you got. And then a nice spray and a light spray of this stuff right here, and, and uh, I think the results speak for themselves. Now, the trouble is, though, is, is where it's all clean metal here is going to rust and surface rust, this stuff, this this acid's going to break down, dissolve, and, and evaporate, and then it'll just rust up again just as fast as, as the other side did. So this is where we would put in the, uh, we would cover it with either a, a spray-on permanent undercoating, like a rubberized undercoating. Um, we would put that to protect it, or like if it's already got some rust, it's just going to rust again. We would have used the boiled linseed oil or the fluid film. But this is where we're going to try the New Hampshire oil undercoating. Now this comes in two different shades. There's a black and a clear. And uh, we actually have uh, have two little sample jars, and you can actually see. Hopefully, it's in it's in frame. We can actually see the different colors. Now uh, the clear and the black. The differences are is you would use the black undercoating on like uh, like frame rails cross members, uh, pieces like that. Now a lot of times on cars, the underbodies, the floor pans, the, uh, the unibody structures are all painted body color. Uh, the, so the floors will be the same color of the body. So instead of using the black, which would cover those colored body panels up, you would use the clear. Uh, it might be a tan color, but spray it on, put on, it ends up being clear so you can see the, the color still shine through so you'd use these on on underbody painted pieces and you would use the black on anything that was already black like a frame rail because it's going to kind of make the black pop better so yeah that's pretty much what the stuff is um, you can apply this a couple of different ways uh, one way is with a cup gun like a, a modified sprayer with a big nozzle in it um, there are a couple different custom tools the gentleman that showed me this was uh, Joe DuPont. This is his card right here. This is his business here where he, where he does this from. But um, he said he just makes his own tools to spray it on, kind of a, a long tube on a sprayer with different kind of angles to do different stuff. One of the benefits to this product and the way it's applied is you can get it inside of frame rails, inside of rocker panels, inside of the bottoms of, of doors, all those places that moisture likes to sit. So what I've got, and I'm not sure if it works because I haven't used it yet, is I got a, a blue point spray wand with a suction hose on it. So uh, hopefully we'll just be able to put this into the, into the material and spray it onto the sonnet. So we'll see how that goes. Let me, uh, let me get set up. Let me get the sonnet wiped right, down. I, uh, I tried to set this blue point sprayer up, but uh, this, this product is just way too thick. Uh, it's got this quarter inch hose. It just wasn't getting the... Uh, the quantity I needed, which I guess is better off because I made this little tool here. Um, all it is is I just took a, a pair of cutting dykes and just cut a little slit in it, shoved a regular air gun into that slit, which makes kind of a pickup, and uh, 
some 5 16 hose and that seems to spray this stuff pretty well so uh, yeah I got a uh, I've already did a little bit of the car I did this side over here I figured I'd do this side and show you guys just how uh, how it goes on you can see all that that rust that red rust is now the uh, the black ferric phosphate so uh, we're gonna put some of this black on here but I figure black is probably the best way to go so uh, yeah let's uh, let's apply some of this Yeah, it goes on really nice with this setup. Seems to go on really nice. Coke. Yeah. Well, yeah, guys. So uh, about half a half a quart did the underneath of the sonnet, and uh, smells an awful lot like cherry coke in here. Uh, that's the smell of this product right now. I guess uh, the next version of it is going to be uh, have a vanilla scent to it. Strangely enough, but that's kind of one of the problems with undercoating. A lot of it is really nasty smelling stuff. And if you, uh, if you try to undercoat a car in a garage like this with the doors closed, especially in the wintertime, you're going to fume the place out with a lot of the, uh, the more conventional undercoatings that just, you know, if you've got a waiting room that people have to sit in and the smell gets to them, they don't appreciate that. But uh, yeah, you can, see, uh, you can see just how thick we were able to apply it with that very, very simple, easy to cre recreate sprayer I made. But everything's all nice and... Uh, Nice and sealed up for the winter. I don't see any place. I really tried to lay it on thick, like uh, here in the trunk, because I wanted to see if any of it was going to drip off. And, and as you can see on the floor, just bits of uh, bits of the old rusty metal, little bits of undercoating, but not a not a single drop on the ground from the product. And it just it smells like really strong cherry coke in here. Uh, yeah, this stuff also acts as a really decent lubricant. Uh, it's really safe for most rubber and plastics that are on late model and, and old cars like this. Uh, it gets into like suspension pieces and acts as a lubricant. So if you've got any squeaks in your suspension, chances are this stuff will, uh, will quiet it down and stop rust. But uh, yeah, simple, simple sprayer. You don't need expensive equipment to lay down stuff like this, but uh, you can see... I did that whole car with only about half of a quarter of the black. That means I have a whole, a whole gallon of the, uh, of the clear, which we'll have to figure another car to use that on. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we could find a rusty vehicle that'll come through the doors. We can use that on. But uh, you can also you can see just how important it is to to treat it first. Now look at how, uh, look how clean that rust mort, that phosphoric acid got that that rusty sheet of steel compared to the untreated side and I I did nothing you saw but just wipe it a few times but a uh, couple of really good products here on hand New Hampshire oil undercoating for uh, first time I've ever used it on the Sonnet and I've used a few other types uh, pretty pleasant to put on cleans up off your hands pretty well you know goes on nice and thick I think we're gonna have a good coating on there I got a I got a few areas inside the rockers we're gonna treat with uh, 
we're going to treat with the fluid film. Uh, we've got an area on this car I want to treat with the just some regular spray oil WD-40 to see how that handles it up. But uh, yeah, all in all, uh, really a nice applying product, this New Hampshire oil undercoating. And, uh, and now you guys all know I'm a, a big fan of the phosphoric acid because of what it does. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down in the questions and comments section. I uh, appreciate all. Every, every comment's always read. Thumbs up are much appreciated. And uh, if, you wanna, if you know anybody that wants any of this kind of product applied, I think I'm going to put in to try to, to apply this product here in the shop. So uh, if anybody wants oil undercoating or has any questions about them, I'll uh, be glad to answer them for you. So anyways, uh, I want to get out and do a little motoring. I think we're going to do a little drive in the sonnet and get this undercoating to set. So until next time, guys, keep it out of the cabbage.